All right, guys. Good morning. CodaBoy32 here. Check it out. We're sitting out here on the review table. Previously this week, I showed you guys the new setup that I'm going to go with, and that included this, what you're seeing on the table. This is an 18-inch barrel chambered in 6-millimeter arc with a 1 and 7.5 twist. Weighs 1 pound, 14 ounces, and is equipped with the calibrated match gas system. Whew. Had to get that out of the way because otherwise I would forget. I don't have anything in front of me. Uh, this is a 5R twist, and it is a cut barrel. Carbon fiber wrapped from some great folks over there at Proof Research. All right, a little bit about the barrel. This is a carbon fiber wrapped barrel, 416R steel. Uh, they do make these in two different lengths. This is going to be an 18 inch, and the other one is made in 16 inch. Now, I've gone ahead, and there's going to be some scratches right here because I've taken the liberty of kind of dry fitting everything. You saw kind of the deal last night uh, where or this morning, whenever it was I put that video out, where what I do is I dry fit everything. I want to make sure it fits right. And the cool part about it uh, is with a 17.25 inch handguard, it comes out right to the end of the barrel. So the only thing that's exposed on this guy is the muzzle brake, which is what I wanted because I need that to be able to rest the handguard on anything equipped with an Arca rail. Uh, we do have a really cool deal coming from Coltac in the future. Like I said, the, the initial investment in doing sniper competition, PRS, anything else is absolutely huge, which is one of the reasons why uh, a lot, not a lot of people are in it, I don't think. I mean, it's not like you're going out and shooting 22. I mean, as a matter of fact, if you're getting serious into it, you got to do reloading, uh, load development, a lot of time investment, a lot of practice. Uh, optics are incredible. But I, I will tell you this, I'm very look, I'm very much looking forward to jumping into this thing, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make the switch. Uh, again, uh, tested out the CMMG 6mm uh, arc with a 16-inch barrel, and we were just hammering targets out to 700 with ease, without even any effort on a bag, uh, shooting unsupported, whatever. So that's why I decided to go ahead from the 77-grain uh Boatail Hollow Point Sierras to the six millimeter arc. Now, then, well, now here's the thing: we're not tested yet, so I don't know what we're going to be doing. But look at the beautiful carbon fiber wrap on that barrel. Absolutely beautiful. One pound, fourteen ounces. Now, uh, I don't have any eighteen inch barrels laying around here. Otherwise, I'd do a real quick comparison on these two. But I will tell you this: I'm very excited about shooting this. And what we're going to do? Take a look at the crown on that thing. Isn't that beautiful. Now let's take a look at the chamber. I mean, there's barrel speaks for itself in beauty, but uh, again, performance is one of the things that we are looking for. I want to show you this. I don't know if I'd be able to get it in there or not. Uh, this is the uh, Mark III style handguard opening. This is their bushing. Now, this is not anything close to what the M4E1 enhanced looks like. But what happens is the barrel actually goes into this system, and then our barrel nut. Where's my thing? There we go. It goes in there, and then the barrel nut goes into this, and another piece goes on top, and then a handguard. But what I wanted to show you were the feed ramps. If you can see those things right there, they are absolutely perfectly lined up. I don't have to do anything there. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. The beauty behind this also is that the barrel is entirely supported. I mean, it, it, this is the best, this is the only reason I'd use this, is this is the best system out there, for, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you put a red Loctite on this, it goes around the threads for the receiver, and then everything else connects. And what it will do is, it takes 24 hours for this thing to seat up. Then what we'll do is we will take and put Loctite 609 around here, and it'll give that another 12 hours to set up. So it's it's a procedure, but what the end result is is a very, very accurate rifle. Now here's the disappointing thing. This is my test long endoscope. And we gotta actually take this inside, hook it up to a different computer because the USB ports on my other computer have <laughs> shot the poop. Uh, one of the things we are gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the gas block on there. I want to show, show you uh, the alignment between here and also the detent. Somebody asked me if these things come with a detent on the back. They do. But it's kind of cool. You can see the absolute alignment, how that works out with the uh, gas port. And it helps in making sure that it is absolutely aligned. But, you know, here's what you can do is they put a, uh, a observation hole right there. 
And typically you can just put these on here just like that. And if you line that up with the detent, that means your gas hole is lined up. So anyway, let's go ahead and get on inside, take a look at the details on this thing, get some close-up stuff, and then uh, we'll go from there. But uh, in any case, look at that thing, man. Absolutely breathtaking. And we'll get more involved in the interior, and that's where the action happens. So here we go. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're sitting here at my desk. We've got the proof research barrel. We've got the camera hooked up. Let's go ahead and hit the record button. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but I got some uh, issues with my camera. Look at the ceiling fan right there. Ooh, isn't that cool? All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to look into the chamber here. Uh, look at that. Let's take a look. There's, let's see, we got the feed ramps. There we go. The closer you get, the better off they are. Let's go ahead and feed in there. We can see some tooling running into the chamber. Now, I have not run anything through this barrel at all. So my goal is, is to get through this video with this camera working. Now let's go ahead and feed it into the uh, barrel here. Let's see, look at that machining there. Perfect, I'm not sure what those are. It's probably some just some specks of dust or something. Moving forward, let's see the feed ramps. Not the feed ramps, but the lands. Smooth transition there. And these barrels are lapped, as you can tell. Look at that. Now one of the things we'll do is I want to make sure we're in the upper position. Let's go ahead and follow the lands all the way down. Nicely cut. Let's just keep going. Alright, so what I want to do, I want to see my gas port there it is wow you can see that ceiling fan through the gas port that's pretty nice beautiful cut all the way out there let's go take a look at the end all in all just a gorgeous barrel We'll go ahead and uh, put some alcohol through it. And what I do when I when I when I do my barrels and I break them in, I use denatured alcohol. Uh, and one of the reasons I do that is, uh, well, I've heard great stories about being able to use denatured alcohol. And what it does, is you don't get any buildup on there. Now, one of the cool things I want you guys to take notice is they positioned. That gas, now whether this was on purpose or not, but they positioned the gas port in between the lands and in the groove. Now one of the things, I'm gonna go back, I wanna look at it from the opposite direction. Okay. All right, you can see that's just like a mirage on the camera. But anyway, what a beautiful bore. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, let's do this real quickly. I'm gonna put the uh, gas block on and I want to make, see how I'm looking at it. And there's a course, typical fashion, and I knock everything over. And we're just gonna go ahead and snug that up. Before we snug it up, I wanna show you what this looks like from the inside and then you can turn it. This is also a good thing to have one of these snakes. I mean, if you're not very good at lining up gas holes, this is a good way to check it out. So you can turn that. You can actually see the gas block up there as it turns. See that? So right there, we know she's perfectly centered. A little bit more. All right. I don't think we're gonna get the vision we had in there, but let me go ahead and close it up a little bit. And when I put this gas block on here permanently, we'll put some Loctite on it. I don't normally use a red on these or a high temp. I just go ahead with a blue because 
Uh, just like race cars, we, we'll probably end up tearing this thing up. I mean, tearing it down again and again and again. Let's go ahead and check that out, make sure we're perfectly aligned, which I'm sure we are. Yep, not seeing anything in there, which means it's perfect. Now let's go ahead, I'm gonna get an Allen wrench and we'll go ahead and tighten that up because I want you to see what the adjustments look like in it. This is fun. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna feed this in here and I want to show you what it looks like when you tighten or you are closing up the gas hole. Well, let me get my... There we go. So hopefully you'll be able to see the uh, set screw from the side over here. There's a detent screw and as we turn it, Hopefully it'll appear, or we'll be able to see it. There you can see it barely. See it? Rotating. And what that does is it just cuts off the airflow. There it is, you can see it real good now. And we can see how it opens completely up. And that's where I want to be. When I first start shooting this thing, I want it completely open. And then we'll go ahead and while we're in the process of breaking in the barrel, we'll adjust that gas setting uh, accordingly so that it operates. We do a complete lot back and go from there. All right, I'm really looking forward to putting this thing together. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun and I'm hoping the accuracy, and I, I just know it will. I mean, again, one of my best friends asked me, he goes, why are you investing so much money in something that's so untested? And uh, I just have a feeling. I really do. I just have a feeling this is going to be one bad mamma jamma. But anyway, guys, that being said, uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, proof Research. Thank you so much for the guys over there who sent this out to the channel. And uh, we're going to put it to good use. And we're going to do some great testing with it. And we're putting enough optic on it so I can take it out to a thousand yards. Let's go to Boy32. Uh, if you like the video you, uh, and keep up with the series, this is the uh, Suck Rifle. The Suck Rifle series. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, uh, Sniper's Unknown Challenge. I'm going to have to use that. The Suck Rifle Series. Let's go to 32. Always end them like this. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America and God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom comes in 18 inches of carbon fiber wrap barrel. It was a really expensive ammo. But we're going to set up a pretty good load for this thing. I know it. I just have a feeling. Let's go to 32. I am out. Y'all be good.